Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, so welcome to Freestyle Fridays. This is my opportunity to do what I want. When I rebranded the show, I mentioned using Fridays as a day to do a show on any subject, as long as it's relevant to the show. My plan was to do shows other than wine reviews or interviews. Now that 2021 has started, it seemed like a good time to try to do that. Today's show, we'll take a look at the rebranding so far and my channel and professional goals for 2021, along with some other commentary. I won't go through the reasoning as to why I rebranded the channel. You can watch the two shows that cover this. There's links in the description below. However, I'll briefly talk about what's happened since October. Now, by the numbers, the rebrand is working. The rate of increase of subscribers, views, and viewer retention is better than pre-WWTV. With that said, the entirety of 2020 was better than 2019, but Q4 of 2020 outpaced the prior three quarters. Q4 20 versus Q4 19 also saw an overall increase. Now, I consider this still the honeymoon phase for the show. In another three months, I hope to see that steady increase continue. As far as any goal I had for 2020, I had wanted to get to 1,000 subscribers. It's not an unrealistic number to shoot for in a year on YouTube, but it can be more difficult for some channels like mine, especially since I don't follow the typical formula to gain subscribers. My more realistic goal was 500. Once I did the rebrand, I would have been happy with 300. Now, I originally wrote this script on January 4th of this year, 20, you know, 2021, and on that date, I missed that mark by nine. I revised the script on 111.21, and I was sitting at 297. Now, I'm recording this on uh, January 16th, I don't know why I looked down there, January 16th, uh, it's just after midnight, so officially January 16th, and I just checked my channel, I'm up to 302 subscribers, so absolutely achievement unlocked. So I'll take it, it's still a small success. My goal for this year is to still hit 1,000. I think 500 is a more realistic goal given the progress so far, but the changes of the show might allow an even faster growth, making actually 1,000 subscribers realistic. Why 1,000? Ad revenue kicks in and channel growth gets better. It's a bit of a snowball effect. Though channels like this will really never become a 100,000 or even a 1 million subscriber channel. It'd be great though. I spent a good two months visualizing what WWTV would be like, both reviews and interviews. In some things I've been successful, in others not so much. I've learned what works and doesn't work. I've gotten more comfortable with my equipment and getting the most out of it. The general look and feel of the show is better. The intro is more than 50% shorter. The graphics I use are more professional looking as you're looking at right now. I have a standardized color palette, fonts, etc. Switching from a red to black tablecloth while minor is actually better visually, at least in my opinion. My background of the two wine glasses with my logo is good for now. The logo is almost completely blocked by me, so I'm considering some other background or just remove the logo from it. Plus the overall white color kind of washes out the video. I'm looking for something that provides better overall contrast. Now I can say that the last few episodes, including the one you're watching now, I've dimmed the white background to try to have it be less like bright, but I'm still not sold on the idea of it. I like the background, don't get me wrong. I probably will end up keeping it. I just haven't found uh, something that gives me better contrast. If you watch the Christmas and New Year's episodes, then you'll see that those backgrounds actually had some really good contrast. So that's what I'm trying to look for. Anyway, the switch to doing a rotating video for the wine bottles is a nice change for me. I recently bought a black background for that. Now, previously I was using either a 
green or a blue one and keying it out. That means keying out the blue or the green color. Uh, and But what happens is that alters the colors of the wine bottle and or label. Now with the blue, it doesn't really alter the bottle because the bottles aren't blue, but a lot of wine bottles are green or have green in them. So, and then the labels, a lot of times labels have blue or green in it. So you're keying that out and you're putting like a different color behind it. So it was a good idea, but ultimately all, ultimately, all I was doing was just really making the background black anyway. So why not just have a black background? So what ends up happening is I have these, these are like cardboard things that you get for like your science fair project. And they were green, blue, red, and yellow. It was a set of four. And I was using the green mostly and sometimes the blue. But then I decided just to go to Office Depot and buy just the black version of it. And that's what I have now. I also recently borrowed something from my friend and fellow sommelier, Ray Scholes. During the actual review, when I'm smelling or tasting the wine, I speed up the video. I typically speed it up about eight times. He does something very similar. He'll speed up while he's doing the bouquet, while he's nosing the wine, or while he's tasting the wine. It's another minor thing, but I think it works. Now, by the way, I've put a link to Ray's channel on YouTube, so you really should check his channel out. He does some really good work. The two biggest things for the show so far, scripting in conjunction with a teleprompter and Google Earth Pro. Scripting has allowed me to be more focused on my thoughts. It forces me to do all the research prior to the show. I rarely go off script, though I've already done it three or four times in this episode. It eliminates my normal behavior of looking things up on the fly on my laptop, since I use the laptop to control the teleprompter software. It's not convenient to do searches, um, so when you're using this software, and I use my iPad as a teleprompter. Scripting works for me better than what I used to do, which was write some notes and just use the notes app on the computer. Many times I'd end up just reading those verbatim anyway, and with the teleprompter, I'm now looking towards the camera, making a better connection with the viewer. It also allows me to make in-script notes, mainly to help with the pronunciations. So in the first seven reviews of 2021, I did wines from Morocco and Portugal. And I used Google Translate to help me with that because because Portuguese is especially tricky and most people, including myself, default to using Spanish. Uh, pronunciations which are wrong much of the time. So in this case, I use Google Translate to give me the proper pronunciation. But what really sets me apart from everyone else in the wine review space is my use of Google Earth. Not just making a map of the area, but also showing you an aerial view of the winery and vineyards. Where available, I even combine street view pics and other pics with the video. I started this experiment the last few episodes of 1337 wine. Now I'm much more comfortable in how Google Earth works. I'm also building a library of wine maps, which will help for future shows, and maybe even another project called Psalm School Advanced. I'll talk about that a little bit. Another thing I've started doing is various editing techniques for the actual show. Since I'm scripting, I can have multiple takes of the first part of the review, which is all the background, you know, historical information. I'll do what are called jump cuts to combine these clips. I also zoom in or out during some of these cuts, and that actually helps hide the cut. But it also visually breaks things up to have better engagement. And you've already seen me do this multiple times during this particular show. I've had some flubs and I've redone some stuff, so that helps with all that. Now, I do these zooms during the actual review too. Now, I'll zoom in frequently when I'm emphasizing something that I'm saying, or maybe because, you know, I just haven't done it in a while, it's just kind of time to do the zoom in. Then you throw in the Google Earth videos, other pictures, the thing with the rotating bottle, with the accompanying wine stats, and other on-screen visuals. It's no longer just some dude sitting at a table with a boring static shot. The one area that needs some help are my winery visits. Now, the actual interviews I did to launch this channel were really awesome, but they had their issues. Most of them were just, they were just too long. Either because we had too many wines to go through on camera or 
everyone got too chatty. Hey, you know, that's how I am. Plus, I like having these interviews be like you're in the room with us just kind of hanging out. But I can probably do some things to move that conversation along. Things like restricting how many wines we're going to do on camera and really just trying to move the conversation along. I also experimented with using multiple cameras for three of those interviews. The first one, I only used one because the environment we were in just really didn't allow for me to use two or more cameras. Plus, for that interview, well, I had a bigger problem. I ignored the advice I give everyone else concerning sitting uh, with a large window or similar behind me and my guests. So it was kind of a blown out picture. The multicam interviews are both awesome and a pain in the ass. Now, they are a pain in the ass as far as setting things up, having equipment issues, and just being the interviewer and the director at the same time. I used my iPhone X in the DJI Osmo Pocket as my other two cameras, in addition to my main camera, which is the iPhone 11 Pro. My iPad controls all of them. The 11 Pro is pretty rock style. The 11, I mean, the, uh, the 10 usually is too. However, the 10's battery is now old by iPhone standards. Now, I do have a battery case, and that pretty much solves the, the power issue, but even then I had some issues with it for those interviews. I'm working on solutions concerning power for all the devices and just kind of making sure that these cameras don't just stop on their own, which is mostly related, related to power. In addition to that, I also have a game plan when it comes to using multiple cameras and also having enough lighting. Basically, I need more lights. This past set of interviews was an experiment of sorts. Now, I have to thank all of my friends at Texas Wineries over the years for allowing me to experiment during these interviews. Now, it's not every interview, but when I do try new things, it's usually during a Texas Winery interview. While the setup is a pain, the final result is really nice. Issues with Filmic Pro on the phones and the iPad are pretty much solved right now. Again, the setup is still experimental. I had to learn a new skill with editing, and I'm still dealing with other issues with audio and video with the interviews, but each one I do allows me to refine the process. Now, I'm show I've just showed you a clip of my interview with uh, Ron Yates. Now, I can also combine Google Earth with drone footage once I start going back to visiting wineries. Here is a proof of concept video I did when I visited a park here in San Antonio. I, I really think it's pretty slick. I mean, I hope you do, but yeah. So what's the plan for 2021? Well, I'm gonna to continue to do what I, what I do now, deliver content better than anyone else out there using all of these tools. I take my new tagline, the best wine show anywhere, very seriously. There's no one, and I really do mean no one, goes to the level I go to. At least those of us who are self-produced. And I would even say I blow away a few of the more professional ones. So yeah, am I breaking my arm, patting myself on the back? Yeah, a little bit, but I truly do believe this. When I go back to visiting wineries, flying in from space and then transitioning to the drone shot, it's gonna be epic. Now, I'm not being funny. I, I, I'm being serious with that. I also plan on getting better with doing B-roll and photos with these visits. Now, it's not that I haven't done them before, but I think I can do a little bit better job. One of the ways I can do that is I do hope to get some kind of 360 camera for my visits. There is a lot of potential for that. Now, mostly what you see from these cameras is just gimmicky action videos, but these things can really be seriously utilized. I plan on doing more of these Freestyle Friday videos videos on gadgets, accessories, education, maybe beers, spirits, other non-wine beverages like sake or something like that, which I am planning on doing soon. I'm recording a set of them, these you know, Freestyle Friday videos during this session. In all this, I'll create a set workflow. Now I'll record four to eight wine reviews in one sitting. Then on a different day, I'll record four to eight Freestyle Friday videos in one sitting then be able to record a similar number of behind the scenes shows for my channel, which is also called Behind the Scenes. Now, I probably should rebrand that because there's like hundreds of YouTube channels called that, but I haven't figured out what I'm gonna call it yet. So with those workflows, I should be able to get back on track with my wine studies and then eventually create Psalm School Advanced. 
Now, this last one is probably going to be the hardest thing to pull off, if I even do it. Producing all those other shows, a second channel, and then you work your regular day job, and then try to launch that third channel of Psalm School Advanced, um, that's, that's, just, that's going to be a big task, but if I pull it off, it's going to be awesome. This show started way back in the day as my video diary for my studies for the introductory sommelier exam from the Court of Master Sommeliers. It served me well to pass the first two exams, including the certified exam, and it's still a great learning tool for me. But the ad advanced, the next level, is exponentially harder. Just wine reviews will only get me part of the way there. Even with all the work I put into those Google Earth clips and everything else I'm doing, all the research. So having a weekly education show focused on presenting what I think I need to know for the next exam would help me get there. Now, I've taken the exam once, so I have a pretty good idea what I need to know. Now, I won't get the entirety of everything I need for the exam done in time, most likely, but it could be useful for someone else. Plus, it might spur me on to take the Master Sommelier exam, but I'll be honest, I will not make that decision until I take and pass the advanced exam. This video, honestly, is my way of saying that this channel is committed to living up to its potential provide unparalleled and unrivaled content concerning the wine world, and using my other channels to assist with that. All these in concert to be that video diary of my journey through the wine world. I actually couldn't have come up with a better rebrand, Wine World TV, right? Expect greatness from these channels. I'll be doing things I've never done before, and I'll be pushing the envelope of what I can do, and being as frugal as I can along the way, at least this year. So no fancy international trips for a while. Hell, I'm probably not even gonna leave Texas other than we'll take an exam, which would be actually next year at the earliest. But anyway, this year, it's gonna be a fun year ahead. So that's today's show. Again, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, just make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And then tell all your friends. And until next time, we'll see you later.